What's up, people? It's your man, Spike Lou. Now, it's another week in the books, as I always say. I came across something interesting online. I was, you know, doing my YouTubes, chilling, getting on those deep dives that we get into. And I came across a video that has very interesting, uh, very interesting topics on it. And I was able to reach out to my man, Don Peoples, right here. You know, he he and I go back, so we were able to come across his path because I seen that he was in the video. And the videos with Professor Griff. Professor Griff was in the news recently when he had his little, uh, well, not little, he had the interview that he was doing with Nick Cannon. So he seems to get people in trouble a lot. So what we're here today to discuss is what was in that interview, how it came to fruition today, and how it affected Donnie here in his career and what he had going on in media. How you doing, sir? Hey, everything good, man. Everything I good. See you, bro. Hey, I, I know it's COVID. It. I know we pose it. I was just gonna say, but, but, I hey. looked at your hand. Like, I didn't know if I wanted to do it. I ain't gonna lie. I was like, ah, but we was on camera, yeah, so I had yeah. to roll it. How you feeling? Uh, everything good, man. Everything, everything good. good, man. Um, nice. You know, blessed from the most high. Mm -hmm. Universe will still be here. It's 2020. It's been a hell of a year so far. So, um, we'll see where it go from here. Nice. Now. 2020, you said that, that this video that I seen, it was like 10 years ago, 2010. Man, decade old, man, right here, man. When this, you this, were this, doing this that. It's the Godfather. It's the Godfather. It's the Godfather right here. It's now, the Godfather OG video. How did that even come up? Like, we, how did you get in the media and what got you even in that position where you're interviewing Professor Griff? Man, um, starting back into media, man, I actually, I'm from Cleveland, Ohio, originally. That's why you got that orange shirt. On. Yeah, yeah, Brown yeah, yeah, yeah. Shirt. Browns. You know, I had to represent. You know, we 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 uh we trying to do some major things, but yeah, originally from Cleveland, Ohio. Okay. Um, you know, moved down here with all type of dreams and aspirations. Actually, yeah, yeah as yeah. most do to it. Yeah, now. as most do, as most do. We 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 always come. You know, dreams, aspirations of being something. So right. at that time, you know, podcasting or media and nothing like that really wasn't going on. It was music. Hip, you know, hip hop, right. always being the hip hop junkie. You know what I'm saying? I got into music, doing rapping and stuff like that. So I had to connect down here. So that's what migrated my move. And you come yeah. down to Atlanta yeah. trying to be a rapper? Try to try to be a rapper, man. Try, <laughs> try to be a rapper. I, I, unfortunately, you know, due to uh, some circumstances, that didn't work out. So how was Atlanta when you first got there? What, oh, what is a really different the city. now? So what was that 2010 hey, Atlanta like? The vibe of the city was real. T.I. was just starting to become the king of the South. Right. You know, he was coming up through his organic grind. You know, obviously you had Shorty Low and they whole little movement. You know, this, we had, this is during BMF. This is like the tail end of BMF. Oh, okay. 2003, gotcha. 4, 5. Two different in life. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? But no, I mean, still BMF. Look, now, it, it was still it, out there. Oh, no, it that. was still piles of money on the floor and strokers. Okay. It, it was still going down. And what I liked about BMF that you don't see now mm -hmm. is they put their niggas on and then put their niggas on to let their niggas put their niggas on. So like, it's a tree. Like, like, no, no, real talk. I've never seen a, a tree of real dudes get money and not be so selfish and let it go down to the homies and the homies. Because, you know, everybody at that time had somebody that was working for BMF in some type of way, getting bread. So, you know, Niggas was going to the strip club. You know, I'm fresh. I'm a newbie on the scene. So I'm coming to this. You know, we going into strokers, pinups at the time. Hey, you know, it, it was just crazy. At the time, it was this club. It was getting ready to open up. It was called Dreams Atlanta, which is known as Mansion now. Okay. Obviously, at the time, it was a state-of-the-art facility, 3,000-plus people. Right. So they were opening up with a situation where they were going to have a grand opening with Gucci Man. And Lil' Kim, they was going to be opening. Freaky Girl was out at the time. Oh. And um, my partner at the time was a guy named Lot. I mean, that was before we got involved in media. He actually had a situation to where he was bringing, like, a Soul Train show to, like, to like kind of like the, the, the club. And it was going to be called Inside the Industry. So it was going to okay. be, you know what I'm saying, a male and a female host. Mm -hmm. And they was going to be rocking out, doing interviews, getting behind the scenes footage of the acts, et cetera, performing. You know what I'm saying? Right. And it was going to be on Comcast, like on Saturday mornings, like on that vibe. So this was your cereal. end right here. Like you were being a rapper. So, 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 your... so, so, so peep game. So, you know, rapping ain't working out. Obviously, nigga had to go get a job. How long, how long did that go? Now, the, the, rap, the, rap, the, rap, the rap went about like a year. I mean, shout out to my dude, Tony B, if you still out there, get with me. Um, we had a movement. Right. DJ Tunk, you know what I'm saying, was producing it, Georgia Power. 
that was the name of the mixtape at the time. We was bubbling, but Tony B and his brother ended up getting into some stuff and just blew up. And with me being down here, yeah, I'm like, yo, yeah, I got to so, make it work. Right. So I ended up befriending somebody when I had to go get a job. Okay. And he was friends with the guy Locke, okay. who was producing this show. So, you know, I end up being befriends maybe Talk about two, way. three months. No, about, no, about like two, three, hold up, about like two, three months before everything cracked off. But he already had a male host. Okay. So it just so happened maybe about two, three weeks before. I, no, I say about two weeks before the show was actually about to get ready to do a live hearing. And the club was about to do his grand opening. Mm -hmm. Him and Holmes get into it. So now he ain't got a male host. So, yeah, so no, no, look, no, this opportunity, this is just called the universe putting you in the place where your intelligence belongs. You know what I'm saying? Because I just so happened to come over. It was on a Saturday. I'm just coming over to burn a blunt with the nigga. You know what I'm saying? He answered the door, he's steaming, beaming. Right. You feel me? He, he, I'm like, what's going on? He's like, man, you know, me and dude got into it. Skip, skip, skip. I'm like, oh man, you know, you figure it out. He was like, he was like, I need to, I need to figure it out. I'm like, yeah, you figure it out. Right. You, he already had to deal with Comcast. He already had to deal with Comcast. So all this was, was about to be in shambles. So Holmes just just had this bright idea. He was like, yo, man, you got the voice, you got the look. Like, why don't you do it? Okay. I'm like, dude, I ain't about to do it. It's about to be three thousand people in here, Gucci Lil Kim. I ain't on it. Had you ever thought about doing hosting? Or like no, comedian? none of that. Because you got to figure. It was rapper bust. You, you got to figure. This 2007, 2008. Okay. You feel me? So th th at the time, hosting was frowned upon. And I ain't even going to say frowned upon. It just really wasn't nobody was like, like. Yeah, it really wasn't nobody like me doing hosting. So he like, no, nah, man, you got it. You could do it. I'm like, bro, I ain't doing it. He like, give you $500, get your wardrobe, and get your haircut for it. Let's do it. I say, man, where you want me to start? <laughs> Let's <laughs> hey, do it. Where right. you want me to start? So, uh, you know, I, shout out to him, man. He trained me up. Mm -hmm. Like, he trained me up. He, he taught me mic etiquette. He taught me, um, he gave me belief in who I was. You feel what I'm saying? And, and I crafted the Donnie People's persona. Yeah. From, from that point. Really, you know what I'm saying, put it together from there. It was lights, camera, action. And what's your job? Like, are you no, interviewing no, it, it, people in no, the No, no, look, so, so, so the, the whole MC? thing was, we about to, you know, do stages of it, right? So it was, we about to introduce the show. Yo, man, it's your boy Donnie Peoples, man. This is Inside the Industry. We out here, man, in front of the beautiful Dreams Atlanta, man, Still State of the Yard. Yes, man, it was just, it was, it was crazy. And I just seen Locke, a couple of the producers, their whole eyes just lit up, and right there I knew. That's what it was. For Did it me. feel natural? It felt natural. Yeah. It felt real natural because I felt at that point I could bring something to the game. Yeah, I was already visualizing the brand in my head, right? So just like that, it, it went from nervous to, bro, okay, like, I got this. Let, let's do it. Because me and my homie at the time cultivated what you see right here. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And it means we got the game on lock, period. The whole scheme was I'm going to interview every hood artist, every stripper, mm. who, promoter, producer from the east and the west side south side north side everybody everybody who need like i'm gonna give them this camera because i remember being in the club and just seeing how people just wanted to gravitate to the camera people love being like, in front of the camera like yeah just wanted to gravitate they wanted to know who i was so i immediately knew because you had a camera they knew what type of time it was on but not even the cameraman just who the who's the dude in front of the camera because i was really on some Filling my filling my zone. That first thing. night gave you the that, that first so night. You, with that first night, you come over there, bro. Now you like, I'm going to the clubs. I'm going everywhere. Facts. I'm out here. We got the, the contract. Camera. I got the microphone. I'm we got, talking. To we got the contract with Comcast. To do no the more inside rapping. The Man, that was old. That's dumb. That was old. But I was still. Were promote. you making money from the going interview? Yeah, talking Comcast. To Comcast actually cut the check with us. Okay. So we actually had a season. I, yeah, I remember being on the Martyr, and it was like, man, yo, you Donnie Peoples, man. I, we watch you every Saturday morning. I'm like, I'm like, yo, I got to step it you up. Feel like you made it at I, that point. I, at that point, I told Comcast, That's what I got to cut to Atlanta. I got to cut the check. I'm grateful just to be in this position, but you know it's worth more than what you get. I just knew I had to always make it more, so that's why I had to come with that. I had to move with this dead boat thing. So that's why I'm like, okay, how can I expand the media brand? So what I did was go out, like I said, in the street and give light to all the people that was coming up. 
You feel what I'm saying? So and they put like, me on them. Yeah. You're talking like the, the Atlanta up and coming up and coming artists from the mic. east side. Look, the title of the show <clears throat> was Debo ATL from Bankhead to Boulevard. I'm I'm including the east side and the west side in because that's who gave me, that's who gave me it all. Yeah. Like really boosting the brand up. You know what I'm saying? To so where it was like, okay, this is something outside of inside the industry that I can boost up. Also, just just you know, giving light, like I said, to the artists that were coming up. And then also, that's what propelled me to get, like, the bigger interviews and stuff like that. So, And you noticed that those artists show you more love, oh, yeah. which made the brand grow. Oh, yeah. Shout out, shout out, shout out, shout out to certain artists, man. OJ the Juice Man. Juice Man. One, and one of the first the artists. The um, Even I, the Lil people Kim, that we may not know. No. Lil, I, Lil Kim started it. Yeah. Um, one of the main people, like I said, on the east side, or just in Atlanta at the time, who was really rocking with us was OJ. So you were getting plenty of opportunities. Yeah, Rick Ross and everybody. I mean, I've interviewed everybody who was coming through Atlanta I said, at that time, yeah. who was somebody from from the VICs to the Soldier Boys right. to, I mean, whoever. You feel what I'm saying? Um, you were talking to. Yeah, and, and also, shout out to Young Jock, too. Uh, and, you know, I know y'all be trying to get on Jock now, but Jock was a real one back in the day. I, I, and I'll say that because he he was showing a lot of love and he was the number one artist. So he used to give me real spice on the camera, like real, like good content. He recognized you when you came up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All that, all that. No, he, he really rocked with it. So dude. you were digging this. Like, you like making this decision, not stop rapping. I'm in the media. Oh, yeah. I'm at that time, at, the time I was doing the Dirty Awards, I was Donnie Peoples at that time. Gotcha. You know, so I came into my own. What put you in front of Professor Grill? <laughs> Donnie Peoples here. The net is watching. Got my special guest here, the great Professor Griff. So I guess that's the meat of the convo, that's right? Yeah, like that's what, the meat what, of the convo. That's what we want yeah, to talk it? about. Um, well, actually, uh, shout out to a couple of my producers. They uh, basically got a call and was like, yo, this is a guy named Professor Griff. Did you know who it was? No, nah, yeah, I'm a hip-hop historian, so I knew he was one of the creators of Public so, Enemy. Like LeBron story. Man, listen, LeBron's a youngster. But anyway. <laughs> Cleveland he's a, he's a Cleveland trader. He's, 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 a, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, uh, he's a Cleveland trader, too. But anyway, you know, once I got the call about that, um, you know, I was like, okay, you know, this is the guy who created Public Enemy. And, you know, I, I remember him being a solo artist back in the late 80s, early 90s. I was like, okay, cool. I mean, you know, I'm kind of on the you know, down south, trap rap interviewers. You know, I, I was interviewing everybody, but I was more so in my lane, right? So I was like, okay, you know, I'll take the interview. Not really knowing what I was getting myself into, obviously. You think he had an agenda? Absolutely. Coming to you with the interview. Listen, so when we went and met... His what? people reached out to you. you yeah. I, either Griff were... or his people. I, I have no clue if he had people at that time. Okay. Guys. Uh, you know. But, you know, at that time... um. There was an untapped community, which is known as the conscious community now, okay. which is a big platform in itself. You know, it's, it's people, you know, uh, podcasters such as ourselves who are fully engulfed in that. And, and, you know, it's his own community. Right. But I didn't have no knowledge of this at this time. And you obviously just... he wanted to use the show to be able to to get off his chest what he felt the hip hop community needed to hear. So your your focus was. The nightlife, the club, the absolutely the, the, the turning up part. Turning up, man. I had big change. Some kind of way or another. Yeah. He comes yeah. across your information. He reaches out. He's like, "Hey, I want to sit down with you, brother." Yeah, he's. Like, I want to sit down with you, and you know, I want to, you know, talk about uh, the Illuminati. I want to talk about what makes you even take an interview like that. I, I mean, he I, told I, you that's I, what he wanted to talk about. The Illuminati I, and when, when, when me and my and producers at the time sat down and talked about it, they thought it'd be a good idea. But until we really got there, mm -hmm. that's when I kind of got the brist of it because I'm like, yo, like we in a secret location for real. Like we under the railroad tracks somewhere on the southwest side of Atlanta. You so know, he what had saying? you come to some uh, right, some spot, man. It's like a little shack room, bro. And as you can see, man, you know we was on the. Uh, <laughs> On a black couch, man, it was surrounded by books, just information. Okay. Just 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 so information. You pull up to the Professor Griff interview, you and your producer. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I just pull you, up just you two cameraman. Yeah, it's about three of three of us. You guys come in, you sit down, and then you get to talk. I know you talked earlier about his career and 
you know, the public enemy or whatnot. Yeah, I mean, we we, we, we kind of talked about public enemy a little bit, but I mean, the gist of it, once I sat down and read about it, it was like, yo, we, we need to go into these topics. We about to just go rough, rugged, and raw. He telling you that? No, I mean, this is me and my team talking about it. Oh, okay. So you wanted to just hop in there. I mean, I mean, in a sense, we was in there. We was, in, we was in the trenches. We you was asked in, for it. I didn't, like I said, man, I had no clue that this information for real hell no way. Even though I was walking on the borders of the industry at the time because I was moving up, you know, we had, you know, different pilots we were producing and, okay. you know, stuff of that nature. So I knew I was about to get ready to cross. So you were getting some footing in the industry. Yeah, right? by this time. this interview. Yeah, absolutely. By now, this time, yes. You're in this interview with Professor Griff. You guys start talking about public enemy and, you know, the earlier things that he did in his career. He tell you, you wanting to meet the head on, like, okay, let's get into the meetup. And you start to ask him about agendas in hip hop, conspiracy theories. I mean, this is the thing that, you know, talking about, you know, the Illuminati, right? You asked him about the Illuminati. I mean, I was I mean, obviously, you know, you That's a host, what you right? were there for, right? But I mean, you was a host, right? So okay. you know how it goes. Like you got questions before the show that uh you prep. Did you and, guys do a pre show? You and him? Uh no. Did, did man, you back, tell him? See, see, this is the thing. See, back then it wasn't no it, it wasn't Google it wasn't docs. It, it wasn't that. We was dead boat TV, man. We was street media. You did what I'm saying? So what that so, means is y'all were lazy and didn't prepare. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, if that's what you want to say. That's what you, I mean, that's what you want to say. Uh, but, I'm not saying the street people are lazy. I'm just saying no, you're no. trying to give a, a, a another word for you guys just winning. Y'all played it off. No, I mean, we went over. It was over, off a win. It yeah, was a I win. Mean, it right? was. Y'all wouldn't want it to be too scripted. You don't want it to be too planned. You want it to still have some sort of realness to it. Right, absolutely. So you go in there and you're thinking, okay, let me speak to him in a way if I'm on the street with this nigga. Tell me about the Illuminati. That's what you say. Basically. Okay. And, and you know, for people at the time, so you got to understand, you're looking at it from a pers uh, perspective now of been there, done that. Like, you know, you got to take yourself back to where this wasn't the time. Like everybody wasn't talking about it. Nobody this. really was talking about it. In in our community, where we was at in hip hop, like as somebody who was in the streets of Atlanta at that time, people weren't talking about that. Okay, well, let's talk about the subject matter because I think we're skirting around it. What were some of the things that he said that you felt like were heavy in the interview where you started to be like, oh shit? I mean, the Illuminati part really wasn't because I felt. And he like said he I, believes that there's an Illuminati. Now, he ain't even about to believe. He knows. Okay. See, this is the thing. Like everything was a no. I know. Yeah, it wasn't. It, wasn't, it wasn't, wasn't. It wasn't no speculation. Because for y'all who don't know about Professor Griffin, I need to get hip. I mean, that interview right there that we did mm -hmm. sparked him to who he is now. Like to who he is now. He wasn't then to who I mean, he is now. Get... I mean, at the time it was World Star Hip Hop. Right. Like it so wasn't YouTube. Submitted it to World Star. Who submitted it to World Star Hip Hop? And I'll get into that in a second. But um, you know. Going so, over going yeah, over searches. the Illuminati okay. uh, topics and stuff like that, it was more so like, uh, you know, whatever. Okay, I kind of did my little history on the Illuminati a little bit before I pulled up. I get it. Okay, whatever. Then, you know, he started talking about the boule and how, you know, the boule got their hands tied in with the Illuminati. Then you start thinking about certain things like, man, okay, the Illuminati was founded in 1776 in Germany. And then America was founded in 70, 1776. It's kind of sticky. During the interview, is he convincing you of what he's saying? Are you that like, part? Yeah, I mean that part. I mean, I think when you walk into that much knowledge, bro. When you walk into a man's house, man, a man got nothing but knowledge. Knowledge. Mm. He he demands respect in certain areas of life. Like you know what I'm saying. You demand respect based on what you put out. Like if, if it's like an athlete, if nigga, bust your ass on the court. You going? He demands respect. Like LeBron, he walks in, he demands respect. So at, at, when I walked in, I, I immediately kind of was like, okay, I, I see what this is about to be. But I never thought it would, you know, in my mind, it would turn into what it did. But the one thing when he started getting into was talking about, you know, things like Quincy Jones and and the whole Tupac situation. Quincy Jones set up those sex rings, and Quincy Jones had called Tupac in to go through the homosexual ritual. And when he turned him down, when he turned Quincy Jones down, and Quincy Jones found, found out that he was engaged to Quincy Jones' daughter, that's when Tupac was marked for death. Tu uh, Quincy Jones' daughter was best friends with Aaliyah. Aaliyah was mocked. Aaliyah connected to Dame Dash. Dame Dash was mocked. From that, from him, from Dame. It's all, it's all connected, all man. To start that, uh, Michael start Jackson that was mocked. It, it's all connected. And, uh, um, 
Quincy Jones and the whole Tupac situation. Yeah, you know, this just talking about, you know, sex rings and 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 you know, just the homosexuality in the business and then now he's telling me about the homosexual agenda in hip hop. Like, you know what I'm saying? So this is where I'm like, whoa. So now it's getting deep. You know, now we sitting there, I'm starting to sweat because now it's getting deep. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, we, we're going through a whole tutorial about the Illuminati. I'm like, okay, this man is schooled, right? So you, it comes to this point in the interview where these things are coming out and you are believing what he's saying. And I'm not it's, saying that it's, it's not, not true. even. It's not even about, like, when you're in the moment or something, dog, it's not even about belief. It's, it's so you in the moment. What may, I'm, I'm asking about the sweating. Like, what were you expecting? I know that he's dropping. Got? I know he's dropping jewels. And you were surprised this was happening on yeah, camera? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, because this is about to go out to the world. Because that type of information doesn't come through my ears or nobody in so my you circumference. you hadn't heard these things before. No. So when you talk about feminization of hip-hop, I'm like, what are you talking about, dog? We all wearing baggy clothes. Like, he's telling me in this interview. Now, mind you, this is the end of 2010, start of 2011, dog. He's telling us, he like, look, your cousins, your, 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 your little brothers, and all the generation going forward are going to be wearing purses, skirts, painting their nails, me, T.T. Ray Ray, Man Man, and all them. Yeah. Now the metrosexual is about to take over hip-hop, and your children, your children, your nephew, your niece, and all the little ones, the shorties now, Tay Tay, Ree Ree, Man Man, and Twan and them in the hood, going to be wearing fucking skirts. Watch. Man purses and this kind of shit. Seriously. All them gonna be wearing purses and everything. Now, mind you, this 2010, dog, and 11, wasn't nobody this, on that type of time. Jeezy, dogs. Like, listen, wasn't streaming. nobody on that type of time. You had Lil Wayne walking around running hip hop at the time. Yeah. Like, Lil, Lil Wayne was getting off into it a little bit, but he was still on his gangster swag at, at this time. But the mainstream, how everybody looked at men, you still had alpha in the game at that time so it really it didn't when he said feminization you like i didn't even know what that meant at the time i'm like what do you like what do you mean so as i'm sitting there you know i'm trying not to look stupid on camera right but i'm sitting there like damn like what is he what is he talking about so you know he gets into all these different things about like i said the illuminati talking about the feminization of the black male uh talking about the gay leaders in, in hip-hop Talking about that he was once about to be a sacrifice to public enemy and Chuck D. You know, all these different things. And he's hitting me and our viewers at the time with so much information. All I can do is just sit there and just really listen. Did you challenge him on any of the information? Not really challenge, but just really was getting him to explain. Really getting him to break down. So I was really one of the first and only people in Atlanta at the time who was doing interviews. Running up on people, just doing interviews face-to-face -face interviews. Anybody who was mobbing in the city from 2007 to like 2010, 11, know that brand. Mm -hmm. Because that brand was out here. It, it, it's, 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 it's fact. It's public record. At, at any point in the time during that interview, do you feel that this is endangering your brand or what he's saying or what you're going to put out? Absolutely. I think I, I did have that in the back of my mind because I was starting to see things in the industry at that time as I was starting to make my progression through the industry, you know, because once you start doing dealings with networks and you get referral referrals, like I've hosted award shows for private events, mm -hmm. you know, just look different things where you just need a face on camera. Like that was my whole thing, like using my personality and stuff to, to get work and, and, you know, business for myself. So the things that he was saying in the, in the video, you kind of noticed them, but they weren't overt. No one was saying those no one things. Was so saying you're not it. challenging them on you. Yeah, nobody was saying it. I, you know, like I said, I was running in the situation, but it wasn't something that I was putting two and two together. But I did feel the information that he was given was real because I felt it on my soul. You know what I'm saying? So he delivered it in a such that you knew this was bigger than just yeah, a man. Yeah, man, because he wasn't babbling. Like, he was really, you know, precise on and really looking into the camera. Like, he knew what he was talking about. This is why you get... The dudes in the streets now with the funny little uh, hairstyles and the earrings and the, the white tees and the cute little tight skinny jeans and this kind of thing. It feminizing hip hop. Thank you, Puffy. We really appreciate that. So then now you fast forward, right? So, okay, boom, we, we get done with the interview. You know, I'm telling my producers, I'm like, yo, this, this, is, this is powerful, man. I don't know if we should do this. 
You, you said ain't our I, lane. You said that after yeah, you guys. Yeah, I said this ain't our lane. Oh, you know th- th- this ain't our lane. Like, so that's what it was in the interview that got you nervous. You started well, getting outside. Yeah, your lane. I mean, you it like started. Nervous. It started getting outside our lane, man. You're calling out people that I'm trying to do business with. Right. You're calling out the Puff Daddies. You're calling out the Jay Zs. You're calling out the Quincy Jones. Mm-hmm. You know all these different people. These are people I'm trying to do business with. Right. So at the time, none of this call out stuff was going on. See. You got to put your mind back then. 2010, where, right. Where, where when people the really internet wasn't, wasn't as big yeah, as it was now. Like, if YouTube wasn't even, listen, that's so, what I'm about to tell you. YouTube wasn't even doing nothing at the time. Mm. <laughs> you know so saying? you guys wrapped the interview up. YouTube wasn't that big. You got the footage there. Probably just be on what, tape or something back then? Is what you're talking about? <laughs> <laughs> this man got jokes. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, no VHS. But you guys have the footage and you're having this discussion should we with put your it producers out? about should, should you put, put it out, yeah, should, should we put not it put it out. What are your producers telling you? They're like, man, we need to put this out. It, it could potentially because they thinking about the numbers. They it want can it be to pop. It can be potentially the biggest thing and, you've and ever done. No YouTube or anything. So when they say the put biggest, it out, it means we're going to submit this to World Star. World Star Hip Hop, man. Shout out to World Star. You know, resting. You know, R H to nigga Q. Okay. You know, he a real one. Q another real one. But, so um, do you guys have a back and forth, a power struggle about submitting this since you didn't? No, I really, it? I really didn't. I'm not going to hold you. Like I, I really wasn't like to, you know, like, oh, don't put it out. But I was just like, yo, I don't think we need to go with this. You didn't? No. I said, yeah, I said, I really don't think we need to go with this not right now because we got things on the table. Like, you know, at the time um, we were producing a pilot. You remember the Britton brothers, right, from uh, American Idol? Remember the twins? Uh, see, this, you just you just a young man. But, uh, <laughs> no. but uh, they, they were the ones that, that actually, uh, when they performed, uh, they got snatched up. You know, they had cases and stuff at the time, and they got snatched off American Idol by the police. Right. And we were actually producing their pilot, like a tell-all. You know what I'm like saying? Reality. Yeah, yeah. So, so I was trying to produce so Dog, trying. I was trying to produce. Okay. I'm trying to take it to a whole different type of level. So I'm, I'm like, I don't think we need to put this stuff out when we're trying to get in the industry. Even though his information kind of changed my way of thinking because we talked for a while and. He was giving me game and everything like that. So I, I was very enlightened after that, but I still thought we should hold off. You thought you should hold off. Your producer thought you should go. And and ultimately, I lost that battle. Because he had the footage? Yeah, he put it out. And he just was like, fuck it. We put it out. Go. Edited, put it out. About how many views, how many people see that video on World Star? No cap. No cap. My father got nine kids. Okay. I got a brother in Iowa. Okay. That nigga reached out to me. Had you ever? <laughs> Never talked to him. Was he a long lost brother? Long lost brother. <laughs> Never talked to him. Was in the military. Said that interview was the most impactful interview he ever saw. Really? Yes. I didn't know who he was. I mean, you got to figure at the time, World Star was the dominant media platform. It wasn't. It wasn't nothing else. People used to check World Star in the morning. Yes. Work on yes. That. That was the first place that they went. To. Absolutely. The World Star cap. I think we got up to about fourteen million. Mm-hmm. Made the videos. Yeah. About about fourteen. Fourteen million people. See fourteen this. million. Plus, I think now we probably, like, it's the OG interview, man. It's like, a shout out to a lot of the conspiracy conscious you think people this got now, the ball man. rolling for, like, the Vlad TV interview. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, absolutely, man. So, let absolutely. me ask you, when even in between putting this video out and getting the 14 million views, the things that he tells you, do you start to look into these things? Is this something I, that, that I, captures yes, your attention? Yes, man. I start looking into... A lot of different stuff. Is like your perspective whole, change? Yes, absolutely. First, you got to read Bill Cooper's Behold the Pale White Horse. I read that. Okay. That, once you read that, that opens you up to everything else, right? Mm-hmm. Then you look into just certain things, like what is the word, you know, conspiracy or what people actually try to do and how they try to move, right? So how did we go from a, a time where public enemy can't trust it was the number one video in the world mm-hmm. in America or whatever at the time. And you had all these different conscious groups like arrested development, poor righteous teachers, intelligent movement, right. and all these different conscious brands. And you still had your little gangster rap still at the time, you know, the NWAs was just coming right. out, you know, the Dr. Dre's that, I think that came a little bit later in Snoop, but you had more of a conscious base. You also still had R and B, right? So you still had love in the air mixed with a conscious tune about who you were and who, and who you was. You talking about what Public Enemy was on? Yeah, I mean, with Public Enemy and just other groups, okay. just, just that were dominating the headlines that I got to see on TV. Okay. 
Got you. you know, one of my first rap heroes was Chuck D. You know, no cap. Like a strong black man talking real shit, saying the white man. <laughs> like, 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 you know what I'm saying? And fuck the police. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so, so that was who I looked up to. Right. So you already had some of this in your background, but now talking directly to Professor Griff, it kind of what he's up. saying to you, you start to get deep into it. Does that affect what you're doing in media? It, it officially ended my media. After that interview? It ended my media. You done. Because, I guess the word blackball ain't the right word. You know, when they say blackball, when somebody somebody come to your door and try to, like, no, it's just nothing just went right after that. Mm. Like, after that interview and all that information getting released, you reading all these thousands and thousands of comments, people, like, you know, giving you death threats. You don't know who they are. Like, you got to think about it. This is before you really even knew who comments and stuff like that was. Like, we dropping world star videos and stuff, but they might get 40,000 views, right. 20,000 views. We was kind of just big organically in Atlanta. But once that hit the internet and smacked me right in front of all these different people and you getting attacked all these different ways, I really didn't know how to handle it at the time. And 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 then knowing how fragile you are, right? Knowing that, like, man, because one thing I can say about bread, right? Like, when you make money in Atlanta, it's a lot of people who make millions of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars. They don't really have a profession. Atlanta, they, they yeah. don't really do shit. Absolutely. But you wonder why, right? <laughs> it's because you plugged into the right circle. So that interview disconnected me from the circle. Now those people in those circles see you as a yeah, they like, like, they, they're like, yeah, like you you know too much. Like you know more than we do, type type thing. Like you 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 with Professor Griff, like at the time, Griff was kind of people start associating you with him. Yeah, because he was I see not really knowing my background on this dude. Didn't know that he was kind of blackballed from the game, but look at look at all the information that he released. Mm -hmm. You know, at the time, like he released some real powerful information. So after all that came out, you start hearing about him being blackballed from the game, and he's just crying because they cut him off. You know, Leor and and Russ and all them cut him off. They ain't getting him his little checks no more. So you were just big enough for him to be able to latch on and get this information out there. Where you had a big enough fan base. Facts. That's what you're saying. Facts. And, and he you knew. feel like that the rest of the bigger people wouldn't even gave him a shot. Facts. They wouldn't give him You a were shot. bubbling and you were on your way up. Facts. He found you, reached out to you. Use me. Got this information Use off of me. your platform. And now people responding to you in the sense of, yeah, no, nah, we don't want yeah. you. Griff, um, I will say, man, I ain't, I'm not going to say like in a, in a bad way, man, but he gave me a lot of knowledge. Professor Griff definitely did. But I, I will say he didn't warn me of the dangers. He didn't. You didn't know what you were getting into. Yeah, I didn't know that the you dangers. You kind of suspected it because it scared you, but yeah. you didn't know. Yeah, like I, I just didn't I just didn't know. Like, and just, the opportunities that you had, they dried up? Like, yeah, man, dried up like the like the, the Sahara. <laughs> <laughs> and we're talking about the club nights. The, I mean, the just everything. Reaching out to it, you. it just so happened. How did, that, how did those conversations go now? Um, since man, people want to picking up their phone for real, you know, like I said, shout out to OJ and a couple of other dudes, right? That were in the industry. He I was tapped from that. It don't even matter. Yeah, he far removed yeah, at the time. Even, he don't even know what you're talking about. Facts, talking about. facts. <laughs> yeah. So you know, it's just you know, but yeah, it just it just dried up a lot of opportunities, man. It also put me in like a depression mm. because so this is affecting you mentally. Yeah, you thought that this was your. Like, like you yes, thought that yes. I, I'm gonna stop rapping. Bruh, I'm a media personality now. And bruh, when you start, when you get your dreams crushed like that, at the time I, I had about six years in media. Mm -hmm. um, I was moving on up, like you say, and to get my dreams shattered and to find out that behind that door, um, there ain't no, there ain't no gold. <laughs> there's 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 condoms and uh, the the and and Baphomet statues and. And, and and all type of other shit that, that you don't you know what I'm saying child sacrificing like real real type time going on like that destroyed me because I'm I'm coming up you were let down yeah absolutely you didn't think that these things were no man I was naive I'm moving listen I'm moving clean. on up I'm moving but you got to understand at that time wasn't nobody on that type of time mm -hmm. you just organically like people do now with even with all the information that's out now people organically move through life thinking that you're not selected still. Like, when you look at people like Joe Buttons, Gilly the Kid, mm -hmm. uh, who else is bubbling now on the podcast side? Uh, like, you mean like Joe Rogan or you mean 
Oh, yeah. You, you can throw Joe Rogan in there. What are you saying about it? Uh, it's all a fraternal order. So you don't think that people earn their way to where they are? You, you, gotta think, be, that you think that they, they've sacrificed or they're in some club to be able to get to a place where they're popular? I think it goes from a basic sense, man. When you, if, if, if you was like in a fraternity or something like that, right? Have you ever noticed like when you're in a fraternity or you're a part of certain things, certain doors open for you or you get certain opportunities it's gifted? Though. It's not really networking. It's about who you affiliated with. You know, you can take it to the basic sense of it like a gang or whatever. Like, oh, for instance, like, right, we was gang banging back when we was little. It was about who you was affiliated with. Oh, I'm scared of him because he's affiliated with them guys. So when you take it to a sense of when you're talking about sororities, fraternities, and, and clubs, right, they move with a structure, and they don't let everybody in. When he exposed what the agenda was and that, you, you know, your favorite hip-hop stars and, and, and athletes and, you know, personalities are all affiliated with something so evil and something so, something so bad. When you expose something that wasn't supposed to be talked about, then that's 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 out in any conversation. You feel what I'm saying? And to have Griff put that out because that changed Griff pattern. Like Griff went from now that's all he does. Yeah, and see, and and the thing is, between the regular community, right, who just talks about celebrity gossip and what goes on in hip hop, and the conscious community, because it's two different communities, right? Griff represents the conscious community, which are millions upon millions strong. Like, there are, there are people that would never come on a regular show and talk to regular hosts who are not open or like-minded because it comes to a point where you just button heads. Well, there's no Illuminati. There's no conspiracy. I just say, just look at the basic sense of everything. When, As a person who was a part of a gang or a person who was a part of a fraternity or Mason or whatever, it's not an order you don't go through. There's no, there's no sworn to secrecy. You know, I, I mean, I'm just saying, like, I mean, just just being affiliated in certain circles, which I am, it's 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 definitely that life moves like that. Well, moving away from the Illuminati talk and going more to something specific to in the interview that affects us, he was talking about the feminization of the black male, right? Dresses, purses, rappers oh, yeah. start to all dress that. this way, all that. Now, that wasn't happening in 2020. You clearly said that. But now that it is happening, how did that make you feel about everything else that you said? I looked at him as a prophet. I mean, I mean to be honest, I mean, it, it, it holds weight. And then, like I said, you got to think about it. And we'll talk off air about certain books and stuff because I know, you know, we on a time constraint as far as, you know, we got a broadcast, you know. <laughs> but um, just the books and certain things that he would tell you to read, and these, and you know, whenever you want to learn something, you read a book. See, that's the thing I think that plagues our generation the most, right? Mm -hmm. As we've stopped reading books, we don't read books about history and what what came about and what the shifts are and stuff like that. So, um, learning everything I've learned from that moment, when certain things started to play out, and that being a big one of them, like when Young Thug was introduced to the culture, mm -hmm. um, it just confirmed everything. And I think it was very flattering to see that interview get regurgitated by so many conscious and so many truthers in the community. And I know it's a lot of them probably looking like, damn, that's Donnie, where he been at? A lot of people probably thought I got whacked after that interview. Because, you know, I've been just behind the scenes doing podcasts. And I really don't show my face no more. Right. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, I know it's a few but, but of my he called guys. those things out, like the defeminization and, and, and all of these things that happen. And you start to see those things happen in hip hop. What do you think is the root of that? Well, I think, man, I think the root of that is they want to they want to demasculate us, us, yeah, us mm -hmm. as people, the, the black, black males. Black. Gotcha. Uh, you got to think about it, man. We 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 have a lot of testosterone, mm -hmm. like you know, as males, right? So it's very important to show the kings, which we are, like the original man, to show him at his weakest point, to show him in a dress, to show him broke down. Okay. Just and 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 it's not a secret to where you wonder why all your favorite celebrities after after their careers they get destroyed in the media and and end, end up in jail or tax evasions or you, you know it's it's no it's no it's no coincidence. You think it is an agenda? It's definitely an agenda. 
Um, and the agenda is to dumb our culture down, which they've been successfully doing for over 20 years, to dumb us down and take us away from the knowledge. And the knowledge is what, what the truth is, which, which is love, positivity, like, you know what I'm saying, things that, you know, honor our brother and mm -hmm. try to help. When you listen to the music that's on now, it's all about kill, destroy. And it's all, you know, it's been like that for our generation, right, right. for a while. But it, it always, like I said before, it was a balance. It was a balance. Now you don't have that balance. That balance has been wiped away. Like I asked you before, when's the last time you heard a love song? A real love song, mm -hmm. like a Luther, a here and now. When the last time you heard something like that? I mean, yeah, it makes you think. Like, you know, like when's the last time? Like now you have rap mixed with uh, R&B, Chris Brown and, and, and uh, 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 Young Thug yeah. or something like that, or, or Drake. Or, but when the last time you really heard a man really love a black woman? Like, like so you got to understand when I say agenda, it's an agenda to hate our females, which we've been doing successfully for years. We all take part of that. We all didn't did a female wrong here and there, whatever, but don't blame it on us. It's blaming on our environment, please. But, uh, you know, what makes us hate each other so much? Like, what makes me want to get over on you and rob the plug? And You hear all this stuff from music. Music has really been the theme to what our life has been. And I think a lot of real men, and I'll be the first one to tell y'all on camera, music influenced my life. Music is what made me want to start gangbanging. Music is what made me want to wear jewelry and ride a certain type of car. It was what I heard, you know, because coming up in Cleveland, it was about what you heard. What, what, okay, so this is what the hustle's doing. This is what the, you know, so we got to understand how powerful music is. Right? Just like a love song will make you cry and make you sad. Nigga, No Limit back in the 90s and all that made you want to break somebody's jaw. So we got to understand the frequencies that we on and what, what that operates on. And that's what Griff talks about. And that's what the overstanding that he tried to get all of us on. Like, man, y'all got to stop being on the understanding time and get on the overstanding time. He just took the blinders off, like Eyes Wide Shut. I, I suggest anybody who hasn't seen that movie, watch that movie, Eyes Wide Shut. Take off the blinders and you, and, and you see what the world is in front of you. That, yeah, it is filled with obstacles, who you know, who you affiliated with. That's what it's about, especially in Atlanta. Atlanta's a very small circle. Look at all the people who've come down almost over the last 20 years that I've known and seen personally who got swallowed up by this game. You know, thinking there's so much opportunity out here. It's only a few people, man, that's eating in this game in Atlanta. So what is it that you think that the black culture people with these things are directed towards? How do they combat that? Um, I don't think we can combat it unless we start calling these brothers out for what they big, are. Big, bad, evil. No, but no. I mean, we got to start understanding. Just like back in the day when Master had the coon niggas that used to turn on other niggas that was trying to plot on Master. Mm -hmm. We got to understand that a lot of these celebrities and entertainers that niggas worship, they're the ones that's actually selling us down the river because they didn't took Master's money. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? So when I tell you people are selected, that's what I mean. Because there are so many talented people agenda. that you know in this industry that we're in, music and everything, that never get a chance. And you wonder why. And then they'll push this filth with somebody who can't even rhyme or looks a certain type of way. You know what I'm saying? I understand what you're saying as far as the agenda. And I, I don't knock that. And, and you're saying as far as long as people are aware of their surroundings and they're able to take in what they need to take in, do you think that they can be preventative of falling into that trap? Not if you want to get into the industry. I hate to be the Debbie Downer. If you want to so get into- So you don't think that there's no way to be in the industry no, and stay pure and clean? Not, not their industry. See, the thing is we got to create our industry. Independent podcasters like your podcast, our podcast. Um, making our own network of people that support us, that's by us, like FUBU back in the day. Like, think about it. We go on to Master's platforms to broadcast our shows. So we got to do what Master do. Point example, Nick Cannon, right? Millionaire Nick Cannon, all these shows he hosting, all that. As soon as he made a statement about the wrong color, talking about them Jews, what happened? See, that's what I'm saying by being controlled. Right now, you're not controlled because you ain't sponsored by nobody. You feel what I'm saying? We're not sponsored. Nobody's controlling us, cutting us a big corporate check. But once you get that corporate check, there's rules and regulations. It's like working a job, right? You can act independent. You know, a lot of y'all working from home now. We in COVID, right? Mm -hmm. Y'all feel independent, but get out of line at home in your boxers. Watch what happened. You're going to get a call from HR, and you up out of it. <laughs> so stay independent, man. I am Spike Lou. I'm here with my man Donnie from Deadboat. That was his journey from starting as a rapper 
going to interviewing Professor Griff yeah. and the acknowledgments, the knowledge that you brought from that and what you want to share yeah, with the industry. Ten years later, man, um, definitely it was one of the most powerful interviews. I appreciate you for asking me. We're going to pick this back up. Yeah, most I appreciate you asking me on the platform. Years. Absolutely, man. I, I like the interview and I, I wanted to get some insight as to how it affected you. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, make sure y'all tune in to Debo ATL, man. Follow us on IG, Debo ATL, YouTube, Debo ATL, all the platforms, Spotify, iHeartRadio, uh, Apple Podcasts, just to name a few. Um, definitely and appreciate you, bro. Absolutely. And as always, it's Spike Lou, man. You guys make sure you check out Real Real Media and the On Deck TV podcast coming to you every Wednesday. While I'm a co-host with my man, Animal Brown, giving you the latest and greatest in hip-hop news on a weekly basis. I'm Spike Lewis, another one in the books. We are out.